Welcome all again to my channel. Today we're going to talk about the square number 14 in football soccer. Okay, this is a concept that it's rather old and I really, really uh, heard about it when I, uh, when I lived in Spain from my British uh, coaches especially. And it's, uh, the number 14 square is an old concept, although not so well known. Uh, we define it as a theoretical space because it's an imaginary space and it always will show according to where the defensive line of the opposing team will be placed so it's normally a space as if we're dividing the team in many squares okay between uh, normally it's a space in front of the defensive line or behind the holding midfielder or both holding or defensive midfielders if it's the case okay so if the team plays with two midfielders two center midfielders or two holding midfielders so it's a space that you're going to see uh, in front of the defensive line and behind the central midfielders uh, back okay and then be the space that you're going to have there um, <clears throat> the main objective while dominating the space is that by doing so we're going to be able to dominate and control the opposing defensive line in a way that we're going to be able to generate and take advantage of free spaces created. So our team will have big advantages as far as creating and finishing scoring chances, okay? <clears throat> so we're going to be able to, uh, if we're able to, to control the space, we're going to be able to manipulate or attack the defensive line in a very uh, important factor in an offensive organization and offensive transition, which is the shorter way and the quickest way to the goal, okay? Why? The shorter way and the quickest way to the goal is very important because it will not allow the the, the opposing team or the, the defensive team to organize quickly. Okay, You're, they're not going to have time to organize. Okay, by controlling the space, the footballer with the ball, and if there were several attacking teammates moving through central spaces, they would be defending man to man, and the lack of time and space so close to the goal would not allow the opposing team to organize defensively. And it would not be difficult for the attacking players or our team to create high quality scoring chances, okay? So um, basically, um, by controlling the space, we're gonna be, uh, we're gonna find our players, if we're on the attacking team, team of course, that they're gonna be, um, in most um, cases, in even numbers, at the worst, and sometimes even in numerical superiority, in a space where it's very, uh, the, the, the way to the goal is short, is rather short, and the time of, uh, of, of going to creating a scoring chance on the way to the goal will be rather short, so they won't, the opposing team will not be able to organize, okay? So this is why this concept is so important, okay? Here is an example of what I mean, okay? So, uh, <clears throat> of course, um, here, in, even in this case, for example, they have numerical superiority and they always say all, also have positional superiority, okay? So, in these cases, the, the defensive cover uh, will not be able to be done because it's the, the, the defensive players are too, the two backs, the two full backs are too far away from the goal, okay? So the only player that can really create a, a, a cover, one of the central defenders, is the goalkeeper. Okay, so if we are able to to manipulate a pass there or create movements and uh, take advantage of that numerical superiority, it will be very easy for us to to create high quality scoring chances. Okay, now this space, as I mentioned before, is not physical. I mean, it's theoretical. Okay, it's, it's, it's the theory. So we're going to divide the pitch in many squares. Here we have an example of um, Osorio, a Colombian uh, uh, football coach. He was ex-head uh, coach of Mexico and um, also very successful coach in Colombia and um, explaining in Spanish how the original, the original concept of, of the square number 14 uh, was, okay? Which here we see the picture, okay? See, because I just lost it. <laughs> He's going to explain it in Spanish now. Sería uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco, seis, siete, ocho, nueve, diez, once, doce, 
13, 14, 15, 16, 17 y 18. Y al revés, del otro lado sería entonces... From the opposite side, por acá. the Uno, same, ok. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Siete, ocho y nueve acá. Diez, once, doce, trece, catorce, ya la tenemos que es la más importante. Quince, dieciséis, diecisiete, dieciocho. En ocho áreas. Y la verdad, no puedo yo robarme el protagonismo. Yo no fui a que la dividió así, sino que así le enseñé en Inglaterra la dividió de esta manera. The way they teach okay. or they divide okay. Eso, en okay. esta área, cuando hablamos de la zona 14, que es esta, uh -huh. esta es tener a un jugador ahí. To have a player Entonces, there. Prefieren tener un segundo delantero, nosotros a second forward. preferimos tener un llegador. O we prefer an offensive midfielder. Okay. Perfecto. Entonces, esto es... Dividir la cancha en sectores. En sectores. ¿no? Divide the, the pitch y in sectors. 14. Es normalmente la parte entre los volantes centrales o los. Es el espacio entre los centrales midfielders. Como dirían aquí en México, por detrás de ellos y por delante. Y en frente de los centrales fullbacks, ok, okay. central defenders, ok. Muchas gracias. Bueno, ok, so this will be the space that, that he was talking about, ok. And um, basically, this space is, is theory, okay? Because, of course, this is going to depend a lot on where the defense, uh, the defensive line of the opposing team is going to be at, okay? So you, we're going to try to generate space there and try to f get one of our players to receive there. Of course, we can do this in several ways. We can do it if we play with two center forwards, one <coughs> occupying the two central defenders and the other one moving and receiving behind the central midfielders or we can do with wings okay um from the weak side or from the strong side depending on where do you prefer so always this is why nowadays uh possession football and offensive football is more sophisticated because there's a lot of information a lot of concepts that before we didn't know about and we try to create and take advantage of this okay now this is the way we do it now Okay, so as you see, it, the concept will remain the same, okay? So the space of, of the square for 14 square, the number 14 square, will be occupied by 22, 23, and 24 squares. Okay, so it's the same thing, same concept, okay? And now they use it a lot, uh, especially Guardiola um, uses, the device the pitch in a certain, similar way, not, not exactly, but a similar way. And uh, where we're only um, we're not only going to try to take advantage of the 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 twenty two twenty three twenty four squares, but also the the half spaces, okay, where which are the the channels or the lanes, the vertical lanes, the two uh, outside inner vertical lanes that that we have on the pitch also, okay. So um, <clears throat> this is. Um, a squ the square number 14, here's a, a video of an example, okay, where if um, one of the coaches started taking advantage of this was, of course, uh, Guardiola. And that's, this is why uh, Guardiola is considered one of the, if not the best coach in the world, one of the best coaches in the world because his offensive uh, intelligence, um, you know, here... In, in, in an example he used in Barcelona with Messi in the false nine and Henry and I don't remember if it was a tall, the other one winger or or if it was another uh, a winger or another forward. What he used to tell them is to be on the inside of the fullbacks so that the central defenders, if the number nine, the false or fake uh, number nine, in this case center forward, in this case Messi, drops back, Okay, since the two wingers are on the inside, the two center backs will never pick him up because uh, if they do, the wing the wingers will be practically open on an inner pass and be along with the goalkeeper. So they will normally prioritize, as is logical, um, the the inside lanes. So they will not go out. Okay, now if they did, you know, it would just be take. A 2v1 situation on the inside, which is extremely dangerous, okay? So normally what they would do is they would 
drop back and Messi would receive a loan most of the times. Okay? So all these are examples of the um, of the square number 14. Another example of a team that uses this a lot is uh, Jurgen Klopp's Liverpool also uses this a lot, okay? And it's a, you know, it's a tool, an offensive tool that we have nowadays, a concept which is rather uh, used a lot, and it's very, uh, it's very difficult to, to neutralize because the teams do it very quickly, very fast, and um, the players have to react in a very um, in a quick manner, in, in, in a matter of thousands of seconds. And of course, at that level of, of uh, professionalism, um, one mistake will cost you one or two goals, you know. So, you know, this, these are things that the, in the high level normally teams control and, and train and try to take advantage and, of course, try to neutralize once they have to face it, okay, once they have to, to, to see it on the opposing team. Okay, so uh, this was rather, like I always say, a kind of... Uh, um, a complex uh, concept, but I wanted to uh, touch it since um, I did the video also, I decided to, to do the video in Spanish and now um, since I'm studying for my UEFA Pro revalidation, I have not been able to do it in English, the English video, so this is the, the counterpart in English. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Please let me know if you if you have any comments, and of course, as I always say, please like and, sh and share and subscribe. And I hope to see you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.